Thanks everyone for, for your patience as we're getting rolling here. Uh, appreciate you all being here. Uh, we're gonna start with a screenshot and we're gonna stop sharing so we can see everybody and just get to know everybody. Thank you for sounding off in the chat about who you are. If you feel comfortable turning on your camera, it would be, be great to get a screenshot of everyone's smiling faces uh, that we're all here today. And thank you again so much uh, for joining us. Uh, we got our screenshots. Thanks everyone for joining us. We'll jump right in here. Um, my name is Keith Lewis. I'm a workforce development analyst with the city of San Jose. Uh, I run programs designed for our uh, students and for our workforce to be able to uh, get the training and resources that they need to uh, get connected to uh, the community and also to the services that the city offers. Uh, one of the areas that is uh, particularly fond uh, to me and uh, to our work here is working with students and universities. Uh, before I came to work for the city of San Jose, I actually worked for uh, San Jose State at the Career Center, uh, who's partnering with us to host this event. So thank you and hello to all my old colleagues. Um, so we just wanted to take a moment to, uh, to formalize this kind of partnership that we have between the city of San Jose uh, and San Jose State University. Uh, we have worked in tandem for uh, a long time to bring um, awareness of uh, public service and the opportunities that the 10th largest city in the United States brings to uh, students like yourselves. Uh, so you might not have known that we're a full service city. We have uh, everything from the airport to the zoo and everything in between. And uh, it is our uh, goal with these events to bring a light to the different kinds of opportunities that are available to students within the city. Um, being a full service city, people can make their careers here and they can even jump around to different departments and learn different skills and uh, follow different passions and interests over a long time here at the city. Uh, and that starts at every level. We like to bring our interns into projects and make it a learning opportunity for them. So uh, all of that being said, we wanted to give uh, an opportunity for you to hear from interns who are working at the city right now, find out a little bit about how they got their internships, what they do in those in those internships, what their departments do, uh, and be able to kind of connect those uh, uh, bridges to you all so that you can ask questions as well uh, and learn a little bit more about what it is like to work uh, in public service. Uh, so without further ado, um, I am going to hand it over. Uh, our agenda for today is really quick. We're gonna do some introductions of our panels. We're gonna have some moderated questions. There'll be some time for you all to ask questions to our panelists. Uh, and then uh, we'll do a little digital networking where everyone can share their LinkedIn's so that we can get connected. Um, and with that, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, one of our interns here uh, in the HR department, uh, Ruby, and take it away. Great, hi everyone. So first we're gonna do some intern introductions um, for our panel interns. Please give a description of yourself, including the following, your name, what year you are, what your major is, what city department you're interning for, and how long you've been interning with the city. I'll go first. My name is Ruby. Uh, I'm a graduating senior and my major is business administration with a concentration in human resources management. Uh, I'm interning with the HR department at the San Jose, uh, city of San Jose, specifically their learning and development team. And I've been interning for about three months. I'll pass it over to our interns. I guess I can start us off. Uh, my name is Leon. I, uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, I'm currently a senior at San Jose State University. Uh, my major is business administration. What a concentration in finance. Currently interning for the finance department, uh, specifically accounts payable and purchasing. Uh, risk management. And I've been interning for the city for just under two years now. Hello, everybody. Uh, wait, can everyone hear me? Hello, everybody. My name is Tyler Lee. I'm a second year at San Jose State University. Uh, I'm a business MIS major. Um, oh, my pronouns are he, him, his. 
Uh, I'm interning for the IT department. Specifically, I'm on the networking and VoIP team. And I've been interning for the city for the past three months. Um, hi, this is Laurie Mack. Uh, I want to say big thank you to Leon. Uh, he is our intern and helping us with a major project that we have on the disbursements unit in the past couple of years since he joined us. Uh, he has helped us tremendously um, doing the projects on the achievements that we have uh, uh, been going on for the past few years. Uh, did a lot of uh, verification for uh, direct deposit as well. So big thank you so much for Leon and good luck with your next chapter of your life, <laughs> graduating and moving to the next chapter. Really appreciate all your big helps for us. Thank you, Lori. Uh, hi, my name is Ioana, and um, uh, I am in, uh, I was an intern actually for six months um, in the public works department, um, and now I got hired as a full time engineer. Um, I am currently going into a master's degree at San Jose State uh, doing civil engineering, and um, yeah, I guess I covered all the questions, right? My name. We're here, master and major. Uh, and I have my uh, former supervisor joining us today as well, Chris. Thank you, everyone. So now we're going to go to our moderated questions. And our first question is, how did you obtain an internship with the city of San Jose? I can go ahead and start us off. So uh, I didn't have any connections within the city. So the way I did it was I just went to the city website. I hovered over the uh, residence tab and under that residence tab, there should be something that says city careers. Uh, you click on it, go to browse city jobs and scroll down to near the bottom there should be something that says student intern. I just went ahead and submitted my resume and a cover letter explaining why I wanted to work for the city and what I can contribute to the city. And about two months later, I had a, an interview process, which I think the next question is gonna go over. Thank you, Leon. Um, does anybody else want to talk about their experience or um, how they obtained an internship? Uh, yeah, I think I want to share because uh, my past were a little bit different than Leon's. Um, so how I found out about the internship with the Public Works um, and uh, specifically with the team that I work on, and this is uh, storm, uh, so storm drain system design and modeling. Um, so um, one of the engineers in the team actually reached out to uh, our department uh, with the opportunity, with the internship opportunity. And our department uh, actually uh, disseminated the information to all the students. And uh, so I contacted directly uh, the engineer who uh, initially put in the, the information about the internship. Um, and then, uh, from there, uh, she directed me to go through the website, you know, and uh, do whatever Leon did as well, right? Like that process is for everybody. But, uh, you know, at least she knew who I was. So I guess maybe that helped. So my advice to the students is just to keep an eye um, on all the emails that um, the college uh, administration sends out about internship opportunities, because those are very important leads. Thank you. Next question. And then um, towards the end, we're going to have a Q&A uh, where all the questions in the chat will go over all of them. But our next question is, what was the onboarding and training process like? I can start us off. So, um, 
I think within the first couple of days of coming to the city, um, my manager, James, he just plopped a, a, a network switch in my hands and told me to assemble it. So it was very hands-on. And uh, yeah, first day they just took me around the city, showed me all the um, IDFs and the NOC and uh, all the things I had no idea about. So yeah, uh, at first it was really intimidating, but over time, like you get to learn and get used to everything. So yeah, very hands-on. And I'd like to jump off of Tyler's point here. Um, so when I first the onboarding process, I would assume that means interview too. Um, I had an interview with the people who were my current supervisors. Uh, a, couple, a couple of the questions were my knowledge in Excel, uh, what would you do in this scenario situation? And a couple of days later, I had an email telling me that I've been hired and uh, I had to go through a vetting process that includes a background check, fingerprinting, reference valid, uh, verification, and just verifying that I'm a student. Now, for the training portion, I had uh, orientation about city policies. It was about half a day or a day long. And they just went over um, unions uh, and whatnot. And yeah, but after that, I had most of the training on job from my supervisors and everything I was trained here. And I wasn't told to read a policy at home or find out about this at home. So everything was done here on the clock. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, our next question is, how has your experience been like as an intern for the city of San Jose? How has this prepared you for your future career? What have you learned from interning and what type of responsibilities are you given? So I'll go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about this. Uh, the, the city's a lot of fun. You learn a lot and you're not just like a coffee runner here. You're, and in fact, city policy actually prohibits that. Uh, it requires that the internship benefit us as interns so we can get an educational experience through the city projects. And even before COVID, many of us were able to intern during school uh, on a part-time schedule, and it's not just during the summer. Uh, as for preparing me for my future career, uh, I am planning on attending law school to go into um, an attorney's office or DA or even public defender. I'm still making my final decision on that, but uh, as for personal, it teaches you personal responsibility. It teaches you that Deadlines are very important in project-based work and how one piece of the puzzle fits into everything else. It also taught, we also learned um, the importance of communication, uh, email communications, how to be clear with it so there's no confusion. And finally, it also gave me experience with reading certain laws that I had to follow when doing my job and applying them towards the projects I'm assigned. And Lori kind of touched on this a little bit, but a couple of the responsibilities that I have were um, being in charge of a payment security procedure where we made sure that none of the money that we're paying out is going into bad hands or um, basically being paid to the wrong accounts for, to scammers. Uh, some contract analysis stuff. And my main project was a procedure that we had to do. Uh, it's actually mandated by government code for uncashed checks. And this includes uh, newspaper publications. And there's a certain uh, amount of steps that we had to take in order to finish the procedure and claim the checks back to our city funds. All right, so for on the network team in IT, 
um, basically from the th past three months, I, uh, I went from like not knowing anything to knowing how to, to like actually being able to communicate with like level one, um, level one like troubleshooting issues. And um, yeah, so uh, some stuff I learned from interning, I learned how to patch cables, which I didn't know how to do before at all. Uh, I knew how I know I now know how to assemble and update switches, which I didn't know before. Uh, and I know how to do I know how to troubleshoot some level one issues as well, and a lot of VoIP stuff. So like configuring phones, building phones, creating new phone numbers, and assigning it to the phone sets. Um, some of the responsibilities that I was given, um, a lot of VoIP tickets. So if anyone needs a new phone, I can build a new phone for them and. It, um, assign it to a new hire, um, phone name reassignments, that's all me, um, termination tickets. So if anyone ever leaves the city, I mark their number um, ter or vacant. Uh, I'm also doing a, um, a decommission project, which is basically I'm taking out all old network switches around city hall. And because we're trying to update them with new ones, so I'm in charge of that too. So given an appropriate amount of responsibilities for the amount of knowledge I have. So, yeah. So uh, for me in public works, um, during my internship, um, so what I did, uh, I worked on the stormwater collection systems and uh, more precisely, I more specifically, I uh, modeled pipeline uh, systems and uh, the creeks in San Jose. And I was given the opportunity to have a very, very hands-on uh, approach uh, to my learning experience. It means that, you know, my supervisor, um, he, um, gave me specific projects and allowed me to work in the software that they're working on and uh, basically they allowed me to be uh, part of the team just like a full-time employee so you know when i made the transition between the internship and the full-time job um, it was very seamless i mean i just continue whatever i did during my internship i just continue to do in my job right now so I guess, you know, in this sense, the internship does prepare you for the real job and does give you the opportunity to learn a lot. Um, one of the things I, I want to say is that, you know, um, you have a class, uh, you, you take a class in school and a lot of the time, you know, like, it, it, I mean, you, you do well in the class, uh, but you don't really understand deeply the concepts necessarily because it's so uh, at a theoretical level. But when you go doing an internship and then you realize, oh, whatever I learned in that class is so applicable here and you make all these kind of connections and that's really great. Thank you guys for sharing. I can definitely relate to that hands-on experience as an intern. Our next question is, how has COVID affected the experience and what type of support has the city of San Jose offered? So I, I can go. <laughs> so um, so I, I was hired, I started in, uh, my experience with the city started in August last year. So I have never seen my coworkers face to face, actually. Um, I actually saw my supervisor once when I picked up my badge, but that was it. So I don't really know how they look from like shoulders down <laughs> because I only see them through camera. Uh, but it was so seamless. I mean, like I did not feel like I missed anything. Maybe you know the social part, you know, like maybe having lunch together. But other than that, when it comes to uh, doing your work, um, it was a very seamless experience. You know, I had the connection, um, the city IT supported me to connect through VPN. Uh, thank you to the IT department represented by Tyler here. Uh, and uh, yeah, even the social part, you know, I did not really miss that much because my team is very good at organizing, at having every week uh, a Zoom social meeting where we play games. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I 
I can't say, you know, uh, the COVID really affected how I integrated in the team or how I worked. Yeah, I kind of had a similar experience. I, I I joined the city about three months ago, back in January. So that was still when people had to stay at work from home. But since I was on the IT um, department, we were kind of, some of us had to stay in the office to make, kind of maintain the city. So uh, I work half of my weeks in like in the office and then the other half working from home. So, but um, when I am in, 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 in the office at City Hall, I have a lot of freedom to go anywhere I would normally be able to go to um, before the pandemic, I guess. So I have access to all the floors and the knock and everywhere else at City Hall. So I'm not really missing out there. It's just whenever I'm working from home, things are a little more limited and I can only work on like a certain type of tip ticket that can be accessed through the web rather than just like having my hands on it physically. Uh, but yeah, it does just split up half the weeks. Um, yeah, I think the only thing I'm kind of missing out on is I heard that we got free lunches once a month, but other than that, it should be good. Yeah, so for me, I actually got hired back in June 2019. So that was we, way before COVID hit. And uh, for me, not much has changed. I still have to come in daily in person because my work's uh, mostly, <clears throat> excuse me, in person. Uh, but those who have to come in, uh, we are offered a vaccine, I believe. Uh, we have daily health checks um, and temperature checks just to make sure we're healthy when we come in. Uh, those who have to test positive for COVID have to quarantine a certain amount of time. Uh, so we're very safe around here. And the city of San Jose also offers sick leave for those who have uh, tested positive for COVID. So that's also uh, another plus. But uh, the only big difference is not having the um, loudness of a usual office. It's extremely quiet around here. And prior to COVID, you know, you hear people talking, you hear um, questions being asked, people laughing, and that was a bit better, but, um, you know, we're being safe here, and it's a lot better now with, uh, in terms of safety. Thank you guys for sharing. Hopefully, we can all return back to the Rick place soon. Um, our next question is, how would you describe the culture at the city of San Jose? So in my experience, um, everyone here is help, happy to help when you ask for it. And I've never had someone outright just say no to me when I ask him for help. Uh, here in the city, we don't have any rude people and no one's trying to be a gunner here. And everyone's helpful. I have not seen any kind of drama that you would maybe see at a, a different workplace. And I like to kind of copy a quote from Dumbledore and Harry Potter, but uh, Help will always be given at City of San Jose to those who ask for it, and even outside the department. And as an example, when I was considering my uh, law degree, I contacted some of the city attorneys for advice, and all of them replied within a couple hours and said, yes, I'm willing to help you out, and gave me a lot of advice on taking the LSAT and the entire application process. And my culture of helpfulness is prevalent across all the departments I've worked with. I subscribe to what uh, Leon said, and uh, my experience was very similar. So, what, what I want to say is that you know, when when you go to work for um, a city, any city like San Jose or other cities around, you kind of become like a public servant. And I think you know this kind of mindset actually translates into how you. Um, cooperate with your team and uh, especially you know how you um, receive the interns for example when I joined uh, my team made me part of the team immediately uh, I felt like home from the first week um, and then my supervisor really really took time and not only him but 
mostly him took the time to actually teach me a lot of things. Uh, and I think, you know, teaching a new generation of students is part of a public service as well. Um, and um, yeah, you know, I do subscribe with what Leon said, you know, everybody's very helpful and uh, they do have the mindset of uh, training you. Thank you guys for sharing. I definitely do agree. The culture is very supportive here. Our last question is, what is your favorite part about being an intern for the city? My favorite part is all the hands-on experience that I get, because this is where it's not just reading up and studying stuff we're actually like helping out putting our uh using like real life problems and trying to solve them with people and um also the amount of trust that they have in their interns because i'm pretty sure uh, everyone on my team knows that i had zero experience going into this position and yet somehow they still trusted me with uh, most of their tickets and then uh, like thousands of dollars worth of network equipment too and they just hoped that I got it right and I didn't break anything which I didn't but it still feels like very supportive and very like constructive that they're they have so much trust in their interns to like learn and improve so yeah and oh uh, yeah yeah Yeah, I agree with what I said. <laughs> and uh, that's funny because, you know, I, I never thought about that until Tyler said it. But um, now that I look back, I'm surprised uh, on how much I was allowed to, <laughs> you know, to do even in uh, my first week of internship. So that is funny. Yeah, and true. <laughs> Definitely the trust is one of the best things about working here because for me, uh, with my project work, um, a mistake on my part could cost millions of dollars to the wrong uh, scammers or to the to bad people trying to scam us. And I'm trust uh, with that, which is uh, something I'm surprised about. But also, um, you know, following up on, I think what Iona said, um, that there's a great growth mindset here and that there's a mindset that we are serving the public here. And the best part about this is knowing that at the end of the day, our work helps the general public out, even though we don't think it is. Uh, for accounting, we are helping, you know, we're processing checks to pay grants to small businesses in need during COVID. And IT, um, you guys are keeping our systems up so we can actually pay those checks. And I just really love how, you know, at the end of the day, Knowing that you contributed to a, uh, a small check for uh, a small business is great because that check could be the difference between going bankrupt and losing everything or staying afloat for just one more month. And that's what I love about working here, that we're helping the, the public out in one way or another. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Uh, our next section will be a Q&A uh, with the audience. So if you guys have any questions, now's the time to ask them. Um, you can drop the question in the chat and we'll have our moderator read them to our intern panel. Or you could also unmute yourself and directly ask the question. Uh, I have a question for Tyler. And the question is, uh, what are the chances to become a full-time staff after finishing the internship and usually how long does the internship take is it just a summer internship or no it's like uh during the uh, like spring and fall it's like 12 months internship what kind of internship is that uh well i can't really answer the full-time employment part since i don't i don't really know much because i'm i've only part-time so far um but i i'm pretty sure this internship is as long as it I stay here. So until 
I either resign or they don't need me anymore. So it's not, it's indefinite, I guess. So I don't, it's not just a summer internship. It's just for as long as I need them or they need me. So if I uh, apply now, it's not going to be just for next summer or next fall, right? It's not, uh, we don't know when they will call us, right? It's like different than the usual internships that it's, uh, it's obvious that it would be for summer or fall or spring. You don't know. We, we, we're going to be on the waiting list until somebody calls us. Uh, I don't know. I think that's up to the managers of each team to determine mm -hmm. that. I see. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So our first question in the chat box is from Priscilla. She asks, what are some challenges that you have all faced when searching for an internship? Rejection. Yep. Uh, I think before getting the offer to San Jose City, I got rejected from most of the internships that I applied to, if not all. Um, so I think, I think it's just like a numbers game. Just like, I, I don't know, when I was applying to internships, it was it kind of felt like college applications all over again, but a lot more intense because I was getting a lot more rejections than acceptances. So yeah, I think that was a major struggle. And then definitely um, improving my resume and cover letters because this was my first year applying to internships. So my resume was, I only had retail experience before then. So I definitely have to beef it up and uh, make it look more presentable uh, for a more professional environment. Definitely Tyler makes a good point. It Rejection. I mean, I applied to like over 20 different internships back in 2019, and I'm still getting rejection emails. And I'm just like, why couldn't you guys just reject me? Why did you have to wait two years to reject me? You know, so it's definitely something that, uh, you know, you have to just uh, buck up, um, you know, find any way you can to swing your, uh, your even your volunteer experience to, uh, to help you because for me, I volunteered a lot on advisory councils and I kind of swung that to, to help me out a little bit and say that I to say that there was a collaboration and the projects I worked on. So definitely, uh, I mean, my door's open if you guys want help with your uh, resumes a little bit to, to polish it up since uh, I know it's a lot, very difficult to, to get it, but yes, rejection is the hardest part. Awesome answers. Thank you so much. Um, Andre has asked, how flexible is the work schedule? I think it's pretty I think it's pretty flexible. So for for my situation as a student intern, I'm getting 20 hours a week. And um, my manager is pretty flexible with my my school and personal schedule too. So I've been able to like move a couple hours around depending on whether I have like club meetings at a certain time. So I could like push back my hours or, or like move them to another day. So I'd say they're pretty flexible with it from my experience. I concur on that. Very, very flexible. As an intern, um, I'm told to work around 20 hours and I just schedule it however I want within reason. So uh, I could work mornings only uh, um, one week and then afternoons only the other week. And as long as I'm being uh, reasonable with my hours, like I'm not saying I'm going to come in at 7 p.m., you know, then they're going to allow me to work whenever I, I want and take time off for finals whenever I want. Awesome, awesome. Next question comes from Christian. He asks, are there opportunities based on major? If so, what are some of the opportunities for sociology majors? I'll, I'll chime in here as a, I don't know if our interns have uh, the deepest look into our hiring process. Uh, each um, department has their own posting. So there's the a few of our uh, panelists today mentioned there's the general um, internship bucket on uh, the city website, on the city careers website. You can go there to check for just kind of the general posting. Any department can look into that for, um, for positions that they're considering. 
candidates for. The other place to check is always look on Handshake and look for the city of San Jose. Uh, there's a number of different departments who use Handshake in order to start that application process, uh, HR being one of them, where we'll source applicants first from Handshake, interview them, and then once we find the person uh, that, we've, that we like for the job, then we send them through uh, our online portal just to do paperwork. So um, I would say check Handshake for specific um, for specific postings for any given major. Uh, we have a decentralized HR, so we don't actually keep every posting for every department within uh, our centralized location. Definitely agree with that. Handshake is great. That's how I got my internship city too. Um, Priscilla next asks, is it possible to keep a full-time job 40 hours a week while being an intern? I would say it'd be fairly difficult to do that um, unless your job uh, is your 40 hour a week job is um, like a graveyard shift or a swing shift uh, only because the city of San Jose is operating hours. We have to be available to the public um, and our, our doors have to be open for them. So we, we generally see our, our doors open uh, anywhere between 6 and 8 a.m. Uh, depending on, on the building, uh, facility, uh, city hall, what have you. Uh, and then it usually closes around 5. Awesome. Joanna asks, what are the qualities that the city is looking for in potential applicants? So at least for my managers, I've kind of talked with them about the hiring process and whatnot. It's, um, first of all, it, from what I can tell, it's the will to learn, you know, the having a growth mindset and having a public service mindset coming in here. You know, you can't really think about yourself. You would have to be the type of person who wants to, who's willing and happy to help their coworkers, who's willing to kind of put off their uh, personal projects to help their coworkers within the office. And that's at least what I personally believe. Maybe if there are some of the supervisors who joined the call, maybe they can uh, give an insight on how they made the decision of hiring us. <laughs> um, well, that's a pretty tough question. So I'm mean, Iwana's supervisor and yeah, I mean, she did have a pretty good resume. Like I think uh, she a lot of experience in not necessarily in the direct work we were doing in, but like other categories. Um, and I think more than the, resume itself, I think a lot of enthusiasm during the interview, a lot of uh, curiosity showed that she was interested in the work. I think that helped a lot. Awesome. Alex asks, what would you recommend someone to do to stand out in an application to any of these internship positions? Oh, I can take that. So my strategy, you know, I was, uh, I wanted to find out uh, about the um, the position I was, not the position, but the team I was going into, right? And uh, what are they doing and what are they focusing on? And, you know, kind of trying to um, remember from my classes, what classes are applicable to that kind of uh, job and what the team is doing. Um, and, um, you know, and trying to understand how my previous experience can fit um, into their needs. So I guess, you know, going into the interview, I was prepared to answer very specific question, even like technical questions. Well, very basic technical questions that they had for me. Um, and I was prepared with that. So, you know, just find out exactly what team you are going into, what department, uh, what kind of job um, or what kind of project um, you might work on. You, you might not know specifically, but you know, you might have an idea. Also, you know, connect to uh, to people who are already interning for San Jose or uh, other cities and, and see and ask them, you know, what kind of projects they're expected to do. Uh, and try to tailor your previous experience and your schoolwork uh, based on that. Awesome. The next question goes specifically for Tyler. They say, I. I do networking too. How can I get an internship with your department? 
Uh, the best advice I can give is just to send an application in and hope for the best. That's basically what I did. And that's basically all I know about how I got this position. So, yeah. Okay, Joshua asks, on the internships, how exactly do we apply? The apply here link on the student opportunity page is no longer available. I just linked it in the chat. So if anybody's interested, it is there. Uh, we use Taleo as our, uh, um, as our application management system. And so you can also search in Taleo for student intern, but the link is in the chat if anybody wants it. Thank you, Keith. Um, Priscilla um, asks, oh, yes. I think uh, Abby is raising their hand. Uh, Abby, would you like to, I'm not sure if you see it on your end, but yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Actually, I'm, a, I'm at work right now, so I don't have the video on, but thanks for giving me the chance. I'm a graduating senior this uh, semester. So I think the chances for me to get the internship, like I'm having other offers, but I came to know the city state jobs have a lot better work-life balance. And if I want to work for the city, do you think a graduating senior like me in accounting this semester will have any chance? Or if I end up doing graduate school part-time, will they consider that as student you know, opportunities for uh, the city of San Jose or any you know, government, I mean, government jobs like that? Thank you. So the question is like, will I have the, is it for juniors or senior, uh, sophomores or like seniors like me, I can apply also the link which was put in the chat. Uh, so I think that link, let me go ahead and click it just to make sure. Yeah, that link is a, oh, so that's for student intern, graduate interns. As far as I understand, I, I talked to admin a lot about this, but they have a, uh, they basically have a pool of resumes and they pull from it from the, uh, as their needs as you fit their needs. So for you going to graduate school and uh, working, you would be considered a graduate intern as far as I know. And our interns here, I've seen a uh, freshman intern, I've seen juniors intern. So uh, it would largely depend on the department, I, I think. For my department, they usually hire sophomores or uh, above. Okay, I can thank you. So maybe down the road, I can try full time also to a handshake. But thank you so much. Thank you. Of course. Sorry, Ariel, go ahead. It's all good. Thank you for asking your question, Abby. All right, next question is from Priscilla. She asks, when you get rejected, did they give you an explanation? Could you clarify, the, are you talking about like internships in general or like the city internships? I think she means internships in general, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but do they often give you an explanation of when they reject your application? I just had a generic, um, we found a better candidate that fits better. Same. Tyler, I think, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I never, I didn't get anything personalized, unfortunately. Uh, I see a hand from Grace. Oh. Hi, um, I came in a little late because I had a meeting, um, but do you guys use that software um, that uses key terms? I forgot what it's called, or but um, does someone actually look at the resumes or is it a machine? They run it through a machine first to see if it picks up any um, key terms that they're looking for on the resume. Does that make sense? Sorry. Yeah, uh, that, that makes sense. Uh, for internships, uh, they're reviewed by people. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, how about jobs? Uh, it depends on the department and it uh, depends on the position and the number of candidates. But the first thing that we screen for is minimum qualifications. Um, so make sure that when you're applying to a full-time position at the city that your experience shows that you meet uh, those minimum qualifications. Um, we don't do any pre-screening based, um, based on any kind of keywords, but it is an application 
uh, that you fill out online. So it has specific fields to fill out. So just make sure the entire application is filled out. Um, we have seen some people uh, not hear back um, because they didn't fill out their applications completely or left fields blank. And that uh, made it so they were not considered for the position. All right, thank you, Kenneth. Our next question from the chat comes from Mariana. She asks, what are some tips to, you give to people when being interviewed or going through the process? Bring a copy of your resume, definitely. Uh, my interviewers didn't have the um, resume. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but um, yeah, bring a resume just in case there's, uh, bring like enough copies so you can all um, spread it out and have your own copy, let them have their copy and just be uh, presentable and respectful. Yes, so in addition to that, uh, I would also recommend to to know and understand your resume um, because oftentimes during your re interviews, people your your interviewer will bring up a couple points from your resume and ask you something about it, and it'll it'll uh, be very unprofessional if you uh, if you kind of blank out and you don't really know you don't you're not like completely sure of what they're asking about when it's on your own resume. So yeah, that, and also um, stay calm. I know for when I was interviewing for other internships and other positions, I always saw it as something that was super intimidating and like an interrogation basically. But uh, eventually I started to understand that it's more, interviews are more of something that like the managers are trying to understand who you are and if you could fit in the position rather than like an interrogation. So I think changing the perspective um, definitely made me a lot more calmer and gave me better responses as well. So what I've noticed in uh, the many interviews I had to go to, <laughs> um, it was that uh, the first thing that the interviewer is gonna ask you, uh, is gonna say, tell me about yourself. So I think this is the first question uh, that people ask you. And uh, if you do not have that much experience in interviewing, that is gonna be like the first wall you're gonna hit because you're like, okay, what am I going to say? You have to say something that is related to the job, but you also wanna show off a little bit of your personality and you have a very limited amount of time to respond to that question. So my advice is that, um, you know, just take half an hour of your day today and write down a little bit about yourself, a little introduction about yourself that you're gonna learn by heart and you're gonna be confident to deliver it when this question is gonna pop up. And I can assure you that this question is gonna pop up every time at every interview. Um, yeah, so that is my, and I think, for me, that made a huge difference. And it kind of sets up the tone of the interview. And if you go through that and you know you are very convincing through your introduction, you're gonna feel more relaxed afterwards as well. Awesome, thank you guys so much. The next question is from Mari. Uh, they ask, how do I craft a good resume and cover letter to actually get a call back? I have 15 plus years of experience, experience but I'm changing careers. Mari, the uh, SDSU Career Center staff, Anita posted some links in the chat. I, I recommend that you go there and um, schedule an appointment with the awesome staff uh, at the Career Center to get some uh, tips and tricks on formatting a uh, cover letter and resume. I'd like to piggyback off of what uh, Keith said. The library also I know has a lot of um, resources. I know there's a career center in the library that where a lot of people ask for help and it's very useful, but the on-campus uh, workshops are also really great for different organizations. I know the Marketing Association, we have one every semester. It's one of our most popular uh, workshops that we have. Normally about 60 plus people show up and I would recommend going to the different on-campus workshops that different organizations provide because they're very lively and there are professors there that actively help students. You can go up and talk to them and you could ask them and show them your resume and they'll give you tips and tricks on how to improve it. 
Awesome, anyone else? If not, John asks the next question. He says it's an open question. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is a growing popular, growing in popular discussion. How diverse is your environment? And are open door policies or team commentary supportive? Uh, at least here in finance, uh, I've looked at other departments. They're very diverse. We see um, all genders uh, in in there, and um, ethnicities are all represented here too. Uh, we're very inclusive. We haven't had any issues of um, any. For, from what I've seen, we haven't had any issues of uh, racism in, in the workplace, which is really great. We're in San Jose. And that's great. But um, I think the next question was teamwork and camaraderie. Uh, we have a, a, a very great mindset here of growth. And for my managers, they have an open door policy. Um, and a lot of our, our, um, our directors, too, have an open door policy. Like, to kind of set the standard for hierarchy here, the department directors are like the top of the chain. They would be like, I would say the equivalent to like CFOs in a uh, a company, and I feel comfortable knocking on the door and asking, "Hey, um, you got your MBA? Would you like to? Can we talk about that and what your experiences were?" So they have a very great uh, growth mindset here, and they're always willing to talk to talk to everyone, regardless of your position in the uh, chain of command. Awesome. The next question is for Ruby. Can you give us some insight on your position and what your day-to-day -day might look like? Of course. Um, so what I have really enjoyed is that every week looks different. Um, the learning and development team work really hard, I'm sure, as well as other departments. Uh, we constantly have different types of events. So there's always something new to learn. Um, but as far as like day-to-day, I usually assist with like tracking enrollment um, for these events and just making sure they run smoothly. And um, the HR interns also plan like help plan these events. So when the one that we're in right now, and then we're also planning a internal networking event for all the city interns, um, which is really exciting. We also have two other HR interns here if they would like to provide some insight. I think it depends on what position you're given or what title, because like Ruby and I work on the same team, but we do completely different tasks. I'm more specifically a marketing intern, so my focus is more on graphics, on making flyers, posters, on um, coordinating other um, more like visual from a marketing perspective versus Ruby handles um, other tasks involved. So I definitely think it depends on what your position with what team you're working on is like. All right, um, the next question is from Trinidad. This is a very specific question, but is there internship opportunities in the HR department? I threw that down into the chat. Um, there's nothing open at the moment as we're gearing up for the end of our fiscal year in June, but uh, keep an eye on Handshake. You never know what might pop up. Awesome, Alan asks, in your experiences, what did you guys accomplish in your first 30 days? Thank you for asking this question, Alan. Uh, within the first 30 days of my internship, uh, I think a notable project that I completed was a phone bank for uh, COVID, COVID vaccine outreach. So basically, I configured, I think, nine or 10 phones for um, a phone bank center for volunteers to reach out to elders eligible for the COVID vaccine and help them, helping them out to schedule their appointments in case they weren't like tech savvy enough to schedule their own appointments. I think that was very, and I did that within the first month, which is crazy. I was very happy about that. And it was a good way to, to give back to the community and 
help others in San Jose. Great. I think um, we, I think it's time to wrap up <laughs> this session. Thank you so much. Um, from being here today, interns from the city of San Jose, we're so excited. We're so happy that you are here and answering all our students' questions and also bringing really great and helpful information to the students um, that are here in this room. So um, students, um, please uh, take time to fill out a survey. It looks like there's a couple surveys. So one survey is from the Career Center. You'll be entered into a drawing for an Amazon gift card. So go ahead and fill that out. We'd love to hear from you. If you want us to bring more events like this, let us know. This is your opportunity to do so. And then also too, please take time to fill out the event survey from the city of San Jose. They would love to hear from you as well um, about the event. So um, please uh, take the time to do that. And we thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much um, everyone for um, all the interns for being here, Leon, Ariel, uh, Ruby, uh, Iwana, um, let's see, Ariel, um, Keith, I know you're not an intern, but, <laughs> but anyhow, thank you so much for being here.